Commander Xandar was twisting himself, trying to find a comfortable position to sit on this poorly designed human chair. The soft purple padding was not helping him find a dignified position for his retracted rear mandible. If these damned hairless apes couldn't even design a suitable seating apparatus, they truly deserved to be liberated into oblivion by the Eterniax Empire. His second-in-command, Lieutenant Vlextra, was getting like a little podling, her neck twitchers flittering so fast that Xandar was afraid she'd draw unwanted attention to herself. Vlextra, please contain yourself. This is a reconnaissance mission. We are here to blend in and gather intelligence in preparation for the human's liberation. Sorry, Commander. It's just that this is my first undercover mission. This is just so exciting. I've never been part of an invasion before. The Eterniax Empire does not invade other planets, Lieutenant. This is a liberation. We will free the humans from the shackles of their decadent ways and welcome them into the purifying embrace of the Eterniax Empire. And steal all their stuff, Flextra added, and appropriate their squandered resources so that they may serve a greater purpose within the Empire. Truth be told, the Empire desperately needs money and resources following the prolonged war with the Ortlax Alliance. Our greatness is not what it once was, as demonstrated by our less-than-stellar attack fleet. You mean our second-hand Vorchek cruisers bought from Salvage Commander? Yeah, I don't trust them either. Too many repair patches on them, if you ask me. It is not our place to question the will of the Emperor, nor the tools he graciously placed at our disposal, Lieutenant. Besides, I doubt these primitive apes would ever stand a chance against our fleet's capabilities as limited as they may be. Xander scolded his lieutenant. Still, this gathering appears very interesting. Did we ever manage to translate that word? Magic? What does it mean? Not yet, Commander. The computer is still running translation on half of their lexicon. Anyway, with so many people present in this palace of Caesar and the big light displays outside, it must be important. The lights dimmed throughout the room and a giant curtain was pulled up. There was a loud bang and the great Fernando appeared onto the stage in a cloud of smoke and dazzling glitter. Short distance teleportation? Interesting. We do not have this technology on file for this planet. What do you think, Lieutenant Quasar-based transporter? Could be an illegal trade they made with the Gorxians. Negative, sir. My analyzer shows no trace of Quasarian energy residue. In fact, I see no sign of any advanced technology at all. Nothing except some rope, wood, water, and glass. Interesting. Maybe this visit won't be such a waste after all. Continue monitoring all tech frequencies. For his first trick, the great Fernando invited five humans onto the stage and started questioning them on their ancestry. Holding hands with each of them, he would guess names, dates, and even life events. Afterwards, he made all five spectators sit on a table and made it levitate across the stage. Lieutenant, why were we not aware this species possessed telepathic abilities? I, I don't know, sir. It's not in the data bank. I mean, it's not exactly up to date, but something this major should still have been included if previously verified. Does this change the parameters of our mission, sir? No, I suppose it doesn't. We continue as planned. We must gather as much intel as we can. For his next number, the great Fernando instructed his lovely assistant Raquel to lay down in a long wooden box and produced a cutting apparatus in his hands. He then proceeded to cut the box in half. Xandar was confused when the assistant showed no sign of pain or discomfort, but could not contain his surprise upon seeing the two halves of the woman moving and her hands waving. What the hell is happening? Sir, how is she still alive? This species should not survive dismemberment. Do you realize how hard it is to eradicate a dismemberment-resistant population, Lieutenant? It's exhausting! That's not all, sir. Her legs appear to be sentient as well. Look at how they move as if possessing a will of their own. Don't tell me they are related to Plaxianx worms. I hate Plaxianx worms. You cut one in half and you get two very angry half worms trying to kill you back. Are you absolutely sure you did not detect any technological trickery that would explain this, Lieutenant? Nothing, sir. Negative on all scanners. Just keep monitoring, Lieutenant. Look, he's jamming swords in her legs. That ought to stop them moving. Oh, never mind. It doesn't seem to actually be doing anything. Well, that's just great. 
Apparently, they also possess a stab-resistant, adaptable exoskin like the Schmardosians. Just great. Xandar was growing uneasy. For his third trick, the great Fernando brought out a giant glass and steel container filled with water and proceeded to shackle himself inside. Oh, how nice, a Sagariox torture box. I haven't seen one of these since the Plaxorian intervention a few years back. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen one outside of the military academy. That Plagorian prisoner didn't even last thirty seconds in there before his skin turned inside out. Vlextra exclaimed. Holy shit, did he just get out, Lieutenant? I, I don't know how he did it, sir. God damn it, Lieutenant Vlextra, that human got out of a Sagariox torture box in thirty-seven seconds, and you tell me you didn't catch any of that. I, 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 I'm sorry, sir, the scanners are not reading anything that would explain how he is doing that. Flextra stammered. Well, that's just great. We can't cut them in half. We can't stab them, and we can't torture them. The prospects of this liberation are getting worse by the minute. Xandar was now sitting on the edge of his chair. His arrogance and pride were starting to vanish, replaced with uncertainties and doubts. For his fourth trick, the great Fernando stood at one end of the stage while his assistant Raquel took aim at him with a loaded pistol. Well, at least this human sacrifice should redeem this horrible evening. If this human is indeed powerful enough to merit this public display of prowess, then it's good for us that he's also removing himself from their potential fighting force. Let's just hope they don't have too many others like him. Uh, sir. Xandar turned his head to see the great Fernando smiling. The bullet caught between his teeth. Emotions got the better of him and he stood abruptly almost failing to conceal his now extending rear mandible. Are you fucking shitting me? Sir, please calm down. We mustn't draw attention to ourselves. No, but seriously, they can't be shot. They can't be dismembered. They can't be stabbed. They can't be tortured. They probably can't be burned at this point, And they have freaking psychic powers. How the hell are we supposed to liberate these assholes? For his final trick. The great Fernando invited all the little premature humans on stage for a special number just for them. Curious, Xandar got up and followed the other parents to the stage to get a better view. Five minutes later, Xandar and Vlextra were running away from the Palace of Caesar and the Towers of Lights, fleeing for their lives toward their ship, their eyes glued wide open by fear and shock. How the hell did he do that, Lieutenant? I don't know, sir, but I'm still freaking out about it. Did you see his fingers? I know, he put his hands together and just removed his right index finger like it was nothing. It was still moving, Lieutenant. I know. And then the nose, what the hell was that? I don't know, sir. He reached and stole that kid's nose. It was still twitching between his fingers. The kid was laughing, Lieutenant, laughing. What kind of maniac beast laughs when you show him his severed breathing apparatus? I don't know, sir, but we gotta get back to the ship as quickly as possible and call off this invasion. This doesn't make any sense. There was nothing about any of this in the ship's database. These people should be living in caves with sticks and stones, Lieutenant. Freaking sticks and stones. I told you buying used warships was a bad idea. That database has probably never been updated since the fall of the Argentic Cluster. We need to warn the Emperor, sir, and pray that they don't track us back to the homeworld. <laughs>